In our last video, we ended up creating two walls, small wall and a big wall for the two sides. We take a look at the reference back. We created this wall and we created this wall. On this video, we're going to create the logs and the ceiling. Let's get right into it. So to create the logs, we want to hide both walls. And then we can press shift, right click and create a cylinder. If you want to create, you can also create the cylinder by create polygons cylinder. So if I click on the cylinder and I press T to get my quick menu, we can increase the radius and the height. So now we want to create the small part of the wall. We're going to bring back the wall and then press E to rotate or you can press either of the tools here, which is move, rotate, scale. We're going to press rotate and then there's a shortcut to snap in rotation. For this, you need to press J, click and drag on any of the axes and you can just snap in 15 degree increments. You can set this increment if you press the uh, tool and you come down here. When I press J, you see step snap activates. When you release J, it'll deactivate. So let's close that. We press T back again. We're going to reduce the radius because I made it too big. Around 12, it's fine. What we want to do is increase the height so that we can make it bigger. We know the wall is 200. So if I make it 200, it's going to be exactly aligned, but we want it with a little bit of extra so that we can match a little bit more the concept art. So we'll increase it a little bit more. If you click on the word, you can increase the size, but it only lets you reach to 100. After 100, you need to dial in the numbers. So let's put 225. 25 looks pretty good. What we want to do is reduce the amount of edges this cylinder has because right now it's too dense. This cylinder has 60 faces. And remember, we're going to make seven copies, seven by 60. It's a lot of faces. So now what we want to do is press T and reduce the subdivision axes. For the most part, for games, I mostly use eight or 12, depending on the type of game or the type of detail that the game needs. But for this instance, we're going to use 12. We have to make everything quads because right now we have a lot of triangles. For games, for the most part, you want to keep it in quads. At least your working files, because it's easier to edit if you have to edit anything afterwards. But the game engine always converts all your quads into tries you can use tries it's just it's better to work in quads right now if we count the edges we have one two three we want to make this four-sided so the way we do a four-sided on this instance is we count one two three and four so you can delete any edges that you want but if you take a look at the grid you're going to see that some of these edges align with, with the axes. So what I want to do is select the ones, the off ones. If you come to the side view, marquee select the edges, you're going to select both edges, the one on the side you're working and the opposite one. So we want to select always the off edge. So one, we skip one, two, skip one, three, skip one. 
four, hit point five. And then we'll delete. Wait, there was something wrong. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. Now, if you go, there was select the one that I wasn't supposed to. So I press control Z, unselect that, and then press. Oh, I have to go to the other side as well. There you go. And then press delete. Now we see we have a cylinder with four sides everywhere. So now that we have this, we want to put the pivot on the bottom. Like I explained before, press D on the, on the X axis. Then I'll press shift position X and then press D back again to get out of it. I'll go into my side view, press X to snap to grid and then bring it up. Press space bar and come back to my perspective view. Now we want to duplicate these logs to about half of this wall. So what we will want to do is if you press control D, you can duplicate. Or you can come to edit duplicate. But that means that Every time we duplicate, we have to move it. And that's fine. You can do it like this. But if you want to be exact with your translation, what you want to do is there's another shortcut called Shift D. Or duplicate with transform. So it's in the edit menu, duplicate with transform, Shift D. So if you press shift D, this is how this tool works. Press it. Then whatever translation you made is going to record that last translation. And in the next duplicate is going to apply it. So if you press shift D again, you see that the same amount. If you press control A to see it, I move 35 units up. The next one is going to be 35 units again. So it's going to be the same amount again and again and again. Shift D. Shift D. D. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six looks fine because it's almost half of the wall, more or less. Yeah, six is fine. So now that we have our six cylinders, what we want to do is grab all of them and combine them. So the command is shift, right click, combine, or go into mesh, combine. And then since we have all this history, accumulated just because of the cylinder. What we want to do is go into edit, delete by type history or alt shift D. And we're going to call this SM log wall front or not front, uh, 200. Then the same thing we're going to do with the big wall. So we are going to hide this wall and we're going to get the bigger one. We are going to grab the 200 size one. We're going to duplicate it. Then we're going to press X or not X. We're going to press V to snap it to this vertice we're going to hide the 200 we're going to use the snapping tools again 
I'm going to press, we're going to go into vertex mode. Right click and select everything. Press W. Press V on your keyboard and snap it to the end. Same thing with the other side. Snap it to the other end. And then we want to scale and scale it a little bit out. And you have your bigger wall. And then we are going to rename it to 400. So now we have all our pieces of the walls. So now we have this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. We have this one and this one, because remember, those are just texture swaps. Now we got to create the roof but remember there is a piece in the front that we have to make first so what we want to do is mark it to maya and i will hide all our walls i am going to duplicate the wall and snap it to the top and then we're going to create the arc so the way I'm going to create the arc is I am going to hide the bottom wall. I am going to use a couple of tools to edit the mesh. Some of these tools are the connect tool. There's also the insert edge loop tool. And you can see the connect tool as well here. And there's another one, which is the multi-cut, which you can find it if you click on the modeling kit tool kit. If you click on the modeling tool kit over here, it's going to, if you scroll down, it's going to be in tools, multi-cut. So what I want to do is First, I'm going to teach you how to use the tools. So the connect tool, the only way it works is if you are in edge mode and you select a couple of edges and then you go into mesh tools, connect, and it'll connect all those edges that you were, that you selected. You can also do this with two. And if you select this one, click on it, it'll do the whole thing. If you only want these two, you just marquee select these two. It also does it with faces and you select all these faces, they'll connect through the faces. That's the connect tool. Now, if you want more control over your vertices, you can use the multi cut tool. The multi cut is like a knife tool. So if you press control, you can add a whole edge loop. If you just want to cut, let's say from here to here, you can just click on the edge and then click on the other edge and press enter and it'll add a slice. If you click outside, click and drag through, it's going to cut the whole geometry. And then if you're, if you have control press so that you can create a uh, edge and you press shift, it's going to start snapping. So that's how you use the multi cut. But in this is instance, we are going to use the insert edge loop tool. The only reason I like this tool is because you have more control over the amount of edges that you're going to put on your mesh. We'll click on this little square so we get the options. And this menu should pop up. Yours should look like this. So the same thing you could do here is click and drag on any edge and it's going to 
uh, create uh, an entire edge loop. So now, if you want to create multiple edge loops, you press multiple edge loops. And if you click on one, you can create as many edge loops as you need. The good thing about this tool is that it will divide your geometry evenly. So if I press, if I want one edge loop and I click anywhere along the edge, it's going to find the middle of the mesh and add that edge loop. If I need two or three, it's going to put one in the middle and then two on the, on the middle of the other two sides. So it always looks for the middle of the mesh to add an edge loop. On this instance, I want to divide my mesh in half. I will delete all these faces, the top, because I want to make an arc. There's two ways to make an arc in Maya. You can use the bridge tool, or if you want to make it easier, you can create a cylinder and add, add it and then merge the vertices in the middle, which is the way I'm going to do it. But I'm going to show you what the bridge tool does. The bridge tool, if you press edit mesh, the bridge tool, it's right here. The way the bridge tool works is you have to select edges. So I'll select this edge and this edge, and we're going to make a bridge. So if you edit mesh, it just creates a bridge from one edge to the next. And then you can add divisions, make it taper, crease the tape. You can twist it. And then you can set the direction that it goes in. And then you have the blend type. If you do linear, it's just going to do a straight bridge. If you do blend, it's going to blend, going to make a curve. But if you do, if you do a curve, it used to do a bridge, but with a curve. For some reason, it's not showing the curve. So it must be a bug or after they updated the tool, it broke. I have no idea, but it used to work like that. But I mostly use blend. So that's the way you create the bridge. The only problem with this is that now you have to create the front, select all the faces and Click on mesh, fill hole. Double click on everything. Shift right click, fill hole. And then you have to use the multi cut so that you can create your connect the, the vertices and create quads. So that's one downside to this tool. But you can still get it's very useful in some instances. So we're going to go back. And then we're going to create cylinder. Scale it up, press T, increase the radius. Rotate it, bring it up, press T, and then increase the radius, and then press V to snap to this vertices or edges. Right click, select faces, select all the faces, delete. Now we have an arc. I'm going to go into my front view, base bar, front view, and check that my verts are actually snapped in place, and they are. So now, 
what I want to do is you can merge these, but you're going to have problems in the middle because you have a vert right here. And this mesh does not have a vert down here. So if you think about it, you're going to be merging all these verts except the ones in the middle. So the faces are never going to merge. So what you want to do is you grab this piece of geometry and shift right click, insert edge loop tool, or remember, edit uh, mesh tools, insert edge loop tool, and I'll add what one right in the middle. Now we can select all the meshes, mesh, combine, or shift, combine, and then select all the vertices and edit mesh, merge. And to test if they merge, you press three and then go back to one. If you see that, that it's smooth and you don't have like a pinching, it's merged. The difference is, I'll show you the difference right now when they're not merged. Press control Z a couple of times. It's now merged. Let's try it. Yeah. Now, if you press three, you can see that instead of a curve, you have this bulge and this pinching. So in order to fix that, you can even do it in this mode as well and grab both vertex. So I'll do it. I'll do it this time with shift, shift, right click, verge, vertices, verge, merge. And now you can see it's all soft. Press one to get back out of that menu. 